Oh, okay, sweet. Morgan, cool, excellent. All right, our second speaker today is uh, Han, Han Wong. Uh, he's presenting Voiceify Your UI towards Android app control with voice commands on behalf of colleagues from uh, Monash and Syra. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, hi everyone. My name is Han. I'm from Monash University, Australia. Uh, this work is uh, Voiceify Your UI and this uh, collaboration with um, Australian National University and the Syra. Uh, let's get started from the motivation. Um, the interaction with uh, mobile phones start with uh, physical buttons, and then uh, surprisingly, it was IBM who uh, brought the first touch uh, screen mobile, uh, and then uh, iPhone came in. Um, we all know the story after that, but uh, I still remember how thrilled I was when I first saw um, Siri being introduced. I was in high school, and it was like 1, 2, or 3 a.m. at my local time. <laughs> And so from there, um, this different um, voice assistant was introduced. Um, what can they do now? Um, this is a screenshot I got from Google Assistant. Uh, apparently, uh, other than uh, simple commands, just checking the weather or set up an alarm, those apps uh, support uh, the more uh, complex features. But the problem is to implement those features that require extra works from the uh, app developers. This may not be a big problem for uh, large companies, but for uh, individual developers, it will be an issue. And uh, let's look at the example here. Say, uh, I want to find Kando on Etsy. What happened is uh, it will bring to you to the screen, uh, the um, a full of result of candles, and what you need to do next, right? Uh, you still need to use your hands to scroll up and find your um, product and then complete the transaction. But what if uh, you're cooking, you're driving, uh, you're washing dishes, or like you have accessibility issues that you can't uh, interact your mobile with your hands? The problem is not solved. That's why, uh, that's why we want to build a comprehensive and efficient uh, voice assistant. Um, it comes to Voiceify. So Voiceify have three uh, key components. I uh, will go through each of them in sequence. So first is the uh, data collection. There's two type of data that we want to collect. First one is the static data, which include the app information, all the activities uh, included in the app. So for whom not familiar with Android, uh, activity is actually uh, similar to s different screens. And there's uh, intent to trigger um, screens. And we also want to uh, acquire the runtime data, which is the uh, interactable com uh, components on screen. For example, uh, there's a YouTube screenshot. Uh, we want to know this YouTube. Uh, this, they have like certain activities, this intent, and all the buttons that we can in interact with. So to achieve that, we uh, managed to uh, retrieve uh, the binary files from Android runtime, and we translate the binary files into a UTF-8, which is a more readable um, format. And from the XML file, we actually managed to uh, fetch all the information we need and uh, store it uh, locally um, in Voiceify. So in this step, we end up with storing all the apps that is stored in your uh, mobile and along with the data that we need. Good. Uh, next, the uh, direct feature invocation. So um, this, we want to build this feature because we want to uh, take user directly to a certain page uh, to achieve the feature that uh, Google Assistant can do. Um, so we start with the intent. So an intent is an Android um, data structure that message to the um, system tell it uh, what to display, uh, what activity to uh, trigger in the uh, next screen. Um, there are quite different uh, forms of uh, intent. Um, a well-known one is the um, deep link. Um, so what is deep link? Uh, this is an example. Um, and this is an example of a deep link from Google Maps. It can take you directly to Cancun, uh, Mexico. Um, and in that part, the highlight one in yellow and blue are the data that we already collected from the previous step. Uh, and all we need to do is we need to find the purple part, which is query from the uh, user command. Um, that brings to the uh, third part, the command parser and the uh, dialog manager. So um, we build, we train our own deep learning module to um, trans translate the um, whatever user's command, say um, show me uh, show me my uh, shopping cart in eBay. Uh, the deep learning model translate that into uh, structured actions, which is open shopping cart eBay. And the dialog manager managed to um, form up an uh, intent uh, based on the um, action we got from the module, and then um, send it to the Android system. 
op directly open the shopping cart on eBay, no matter what is the previous screen. Um, and then the user can say, oh, tap checkout, click checkout, same process, and that's how you finish the um, shopping experience by using your command, and that's just also how we uh, managed to uh, solve the problem we raised in the uh, very beginning. Here's the uh, evaluation part. So we do the evaluation for the command parser. Uh, it's achieved pretty good result. Uh, we also uh, evaluate it on the feature invocation part. Uh, we download 30 popular apps from 10 different categories on Google Play Store. Um, 70, over 70% 70 of the intents can be successfully invoked. Some of the uh, unsuccessful failure ones could be uh, some, some intents related to uh, privacy or like more complicated data set that we can't, data structure that we can't extract from the um, runtime. We also do the user study. So we uh, recruit eight participants with uh, four tasks to complete with Voiceify and Google Voice Access. Uh, Google Voice Access is um, like a very simple version for people with accessibility issues, and they only support like very simple command, like click here, click there, um, and like um, scroll up, scroll down for this. Um, we select the, the um, individual uh, developer apps, and um, the result shows that the average complete time for Voiceify is um, shorter than the um, voice access. Uh, and voice access, uh, sorry, Voiceify also uh, achieve a higher score in the usability uh, metrics, which is pretty good. Um, and for the um, future direction, of course, there will be large learning module involved because eventually it's, um, it's text, it's voice to text and there's like um, open AI uh, whisper, and there's um, all different APIs nowadays available. Uh, we've done some preliminary uh, study and it shows pretty good results, uh, which we think uh, theoretically it can replace the um, common parser in the dialogue manager that we proposed. Um, <laughs> We, because it's intent-based system, so uh, ideally the system can be deployed to all kind of uh, system or devices that run by Android. Uh, for example, the uh, OHMD that's running on Android, uh, or the um, your smartwatch or like a car system. Um, we are looking for more opportunities to deploy the Voiceify into those systems to support uh, voice control. And yeah, that's the. That's our work. Uh, this um, um, demo online, you can have a look. Uh, we've open source our code, uh, scan the QR code, can direct to there. Uh, I think that's all I'd like to discuss. Thank you. Um, right, so there, there will be, of course, there will be a lot of ambiguity commands. Um, I think that's also one of the main issues that voice access faced. And how we did that is because we have the access to the, um, to the interactable component on screen. So we have like a higher accurate match because even there's like say, a lot of times say when you say uh, press number two, uh, it may uh, interpret as that instead of Number two, it may interest like TOO or TO. Um, but in this case, it's our uh, language model, uh, the deep learning model that we uh, implemented can like successfully map that to the uh, on-screen component. But I would say, because we also did some like, uh, preliminary study with large language model, this problem can be solved better by large language model, to be honest. Thank you. <laughs>